At first, I was into cryptocurrencies. Uh, I was lying to myself that I will make a million dollars from crypto, but uh, <laughs> no, unless no, unless your God is working overtime. You know, I, I, I'm sure many of us think we go and pour our money in some, in some crypto and it's gonna go to the moon and <laughs> yeah. But I, crypto gets kind of boring if you are not if you are not trading the currencies in the sense that if you are not riding the waves like if you are not selling when it goes high and buying when it goes low and with crypto you typically have to wait for longer periods to see profits but it's quite different with uh nfts so uh how i started my journey in nfts i was doing a lot of research through twitter instagram uh, trying to find out what it because i would see an insta post that would be like somebody minted an NFT for three fifty dollars and sold it for three hundred thousand dollars, and I'm thinking that's three hundred thousand percent profit. No bank in Ghana can give you that kind of return, so this must be quite interesting. So um, that's what led me to uh, dive into NFTs. The first NFT I I minted. When we say mint in NFTs, is the process where you have first mover advantage. In NFTs or for a particular NFT so minting enables you to be the first purchaser at typically a discounted rate because it's two markets there's the primary markets and the secondary markets so the primary markets is for minters whereby it's almost like let's say Mercedes were given were given cars to dealerships right they will typically give it to the dealers at a discount so that the dealers can sell on the secondary market at a premium to make profits. That's how minting works in NFTs. I was on Twitter around 6 a.m. and I saw that some NFT called Doodle Punks have, uh, I don't know if I can show it to you. Some NFT called Doodle Punks are minting. They did what they call a stealth mint. So with a stealth mint, uh, they kind of don't have a particular time so impromptu they just release the link there and so they're still anybody who gets the link first has the first move advance so they get to buy from the primary market for cheap as you can see uh -huh. these bald headed young boys uh, I purchased them uh, I think um, $300 each at the time so the total came to $900 uh, Typically, uh, they are traded in the, in the uh, cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Uh, there are several different cryptocurrencies in which NFTs are traded in. Um, some are Solana, that's also another uh, cryptocurrency. There's Ethereum, which is a cryptocurrency. There is a Phantom. There are many other cryptocurrencies, but I, uh, Ethereum is the most popular cryptocurrency in which NFTs are traded. So I typically stick to Ethereum uh, NFTs. So I meant that these are. 0.1 ethereum at the time which was about 300 dollars so the three came to about a thousand dollars because in ethereum after you make any tr any form of transaction literally even if you transfer an nft from one place to another you have to pay a fee even if you sell you have to pay a fee so that's what typically makes people stay away from the ethereum blockchain because of the fees that are uh that you have to pay when making transactions on the ethereum um, blockchain so uh, this came on twitter i saw the link and i got excited because I, I, I there's an nft called doodle we'll get into that uh and there's one called crypto punks which was one of the first nfts so this was like a derivative of the two called a doodle punk so a doodle and a crypto punk so i thought oh the, the, the kind of thinking that was going through my head was if Doodle is such a good NFT and CryptoPunk is such a legendary one. Then this since this one is like a merge of the two. <laughs> then it might be worth something, right? So it came and I bought these three. And um I was with my friend at the bar actually, and I was with my laptop at the time. And the thing was going up. So I bought it for 0 0.1 and it went to 0 0.256. And I was like, hey, bro, I'm making money. Yo. <laughs> but this <laughs> It was in December. I remember I, I bought this on December 6th. Oh, I thought it was the coolest thing on earth. So, today, <laughs> just to let you understand how uh, volatile and risky the market is, I don't know. 
I don't know why I'm clicking and it's not coming. But the 0 0.1 that I bought the thing for, you see, the floor price, if you in economics, you see we have floor ceilings and floor, uh, we have ceiling prices and floor prices. So the floor, you can't go beneath, right? Or not unless you want to go to hell, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't go beneath the floor price. That's the, the lowest that you can purchase one for. So the thing that when I purchased, the lowest, the thing went to 0 0.256. Today is 0 0.007. <laughs> you see how the, the space is. So I typically don't blame people when they say it's a scam. and Because come on, if this was your first experience, that you bought something for zero, I bought it for 0 0.1. I only keep these for the, the the sentimental value, you know, as memories. But really and truly, I've made such a big loss on this. Because from 0 0.1, I saw the thing at 0 0.256. I didn't sell it to. Her. I thought the thing was going to one million dollars, just like all of us do. <laughs> Today, the thing is 0 0.007, which is like nine dollars. So me, young boy, my thousand dollars. Hey, this contract is five thousand dollars to put here. You know, so this is my, uh, this is what's happened to me and this is the reason why I'm here today. <laughs> to advise you not to get into NFTs. Nah, I'm just playing. But, if you see in NFTs, it's experience like this that shape you. You know, because after this, when you when you go to the heart ache of the, the emotional, you know, investing is such an uh, emotional game. When you go through the emotions of excitement, when the thing is going up, and is it just like you are broken up with your girlfriend? Like when the thing is going down like that, because it's like, oh, I thought you were going to be faithful to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, but uh, there you have it from from 0 0.256 to 0 0.007. You know, so it's uh, it's quite the process. And um, from if you know, the question is, how did I start my journey? After this, I said, I, I can't let this happen to me again. So now I decided to be more careful about where I was putting my money. I started looking into what am I really getting myself into. Um, I guess I guess in this game you don't really lose, you really gain from the loss. So I never really count the losses because if you don't lose, you won't learn how to gain. But unfortunately, losing here is very expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? But glory be to God, uh, this was in my last. <laughs> I mean, these bald boys, they did quite a number on me, but uh, I guess so far, so good. So that's how I go into NFTs, through the bald boys. Yeah. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, right? So it's basically ownership on the blockchain. I don't know if you've heard Web3, Web3. Yes, Web3 is basically the new age of internet where individuals like you and I, we have more ownership. Because at first, we just absorb information. Like we go on Twitter and read everything in the world and we go on Instagram and see everything in the world. And these uh, platforms are benefiting, right? From our using their platforms. Like Twitter will be charging for advertisements, um, YouTube, blah, blah. But now in Web3, it's changing in the sense that now individuals are owning things on the you know, like for the longest time in the music industry, royalties have always been centralized around the uh, streaming uh, companies. But the blockchain, uh, NFTs, Web3, NFTs is not just digital images, it's ownership. It's like it is, you, even music can be an NFT, right? So many things, even tick, concert tickets can be an NFT. You know, even membership uh, tickets can be an NFT. So NFTs, now even the musicians can benefit from NFTs in the sense that they own their content now and they can sell it to you and I. So it kind of cuts out the middleman. So typically, I would say that's the difference between NFTs and crypto. NFT is more ownership of many other complicated stuff. Crypto is the coins that you own and use to buy and sell. Typically in NFT projects, um, the way to get on the prime, you see, I made the example of the primary and the secondary markets. If you are starting out and you don't have a lot of capital, 
and this is uh, this is for all those who want to start it's easier to build capital by getting on the white list which is like the primary market because it's sold for cheap there right for example board ape yacht club this is board ape yacht club right now they have a floor price of 118 ethereum so let's just say ethereum's price is uh three thousand dollars 118 times three thousand is three hundred and fifty four thousand dollars for one of the the handsome monkeys over here and even that um there are different tiers to them projects have different requirements for you to get on their white list right i don't know what board apes was for, for at the time but some of the projects that i've been a part for do several different things and i've done several different things to get on the white list like um some of them have singing competitions talent shows that's when you see that they are grown men who are wild for money I've, <laughs> no i'm serious like you know you have to do things for whitelist and i'll get into some of the things that i have done uh, for whitelist like I remember one of there were singing competitions, so I called my friend, my friend Abande. He he's like a professional singer, and I called another friend of mine, Patience, who was in uh, Canada at the time, to make them sing for me. And you see grown men dancing. <laughs> no, like people really do. You see grown men dancing, singing. You no, know, but because really and truly, it's a money, it's a, it's a money game, because you are minting something for about three hundred dollars, and on the secondary market, it's quickly going to shoot up to about three thousand dollars. 300 to 3,000. That, that's quite the jump, don't you think? Yeah, so it's, there are different, different things for whitelist. Let me show you some of what I have done. This, I, I made this video for, there's this project called Let's Walk by DK Motion. He's a legendary animator. Um, this is what I did for Let's Walk. Let's Walk. Basically, I did that for his whitelist, and that, like, let me show you how. I don't. I'm not going to talk numbers or figures, but just to show you how important it is to get on the whitelist for a good project. So when I got the whitelist for this, I minted it for 0 0.35, which is if Ethereum is three thousand dollars. Let me do my quick mathematics. So I minted it for thousand and fifty, although. 1050 but the floor price on the thing was 3.5 and 3.5 times 3000 is 10500 so do you see the difference that's 9450 dollars in profit and the floor the floor went up to about it is it actually been to like 5 ETH, 5 ethereum before and 5 Ethereum is $15,000. So if you see a grown man dancing, don't laugh at him. <laughs> do, do, do you see what I'm talking about? That's the importance of the whitelist. Because some of the projects, when they come, the, the level of demand for them are ridiculous. The toughest one. I'll say maybe Invisible Friends. That one I had to do a <laughs> I have to do a whole. Let me see if I have it. Bing bang. Grenade out.
that was what I did for Invisible Friends. Uh, it was so. It was you, you have to be creative because it's like you're competing with so many other people. If you are starting off, um, you can be actively chatting in the community. Uh, I mean, if if you want to get wireless, you can be actively chatting in the community. Actually, act actively making connections, building relationships. Yeah. Question. What did they ask me to do? They said if you were invisible for a day, what would you do? And I said I would posit positively impact the world. So if you notice they stole someone's ipad then i went to retrieve it and i was dressed as the invisible friends character some of them that had uh, come at the time and i guess i was a superhero or i was invisible and doing good deeds in society okay no no it's like when you're even talking it for a low price, it at a high price. Yeah. But then, you're, let's see, you're not the person who said the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So many other people have voted the exact same thing. So let's say I'm starting NFTs to you, and I managed to get a project that I minted at maybe $100, and it's going at this value. Okay. And no one knows me on the street. And a lot of people also said the exact same thing. How would that get my to sell? So, on the secondary market, is demand and supply. And in the NFT space, it's not like in real life where somebody has to know you to buy the product. They are not dealing with the person selling it. They are dealing with the, they are, they are, they are more concerned about the product itself. So if there's good enough demand for the project that you minted, then somebody's going to buy it. But there are products that mint and you try and sell it and it doesn't sell simply because there's not enough demand for it. Nobody really cares about who you are, blah, blah. blah. No, unless you want to make a private sale where you contact somebody and say hey i want to buy this for this price or maybe i want to trade maybe some some money plus your nft or maybe two nfts plus some money for this or you know that's when it will be important to ask who you are and stuff but otherwise if there's demand it's gonna go so would you advise someone going into a future career solely based on nft no it's gonna go to zero <laughs> no i'm I, it's a bubble it might burst and let me be real like it might go to zero as <laughs> possible. That happened with the, the dot-com uh, burst. You know what happened with in the 80s? The S&P 500 has burst. That's, that's something that like, it can go to zero because it's new. Nobody knows the future. It's possible that it goes to zero. People don't like to hear as much as I'm, I'm invested in it, I still know that it's possible that, although I understand what is driving it and I think it's going to be here to stay. I mean, there are several different mega minds in the world like Gary V, uh, Mike Novogratz, Mark Cuban, um, there's, there's so much acceptance of NFTs and people have positive hopes, but also keep an open mind. So leverage it with something else. I wouldn't say you can, I mean, there are full-time NFT traders and you make money while the space is good, but I don't know what happens tomorrow when there's nothing to, when there's no more demand for the projects. So you can go into it full-time. It's possible, but I would say have a backbone or... Um, so I'm asking this question um, from a, a very dealer perspective. Okay. So, dealer, we try to create avenues, as you can see, where yeah. our um, yeah. more only students, our staff, and faculty to design them. Okay. So, for anybody who is here currently, what should be the main? Um, is there an opportunity for people to become creators? Um, I know you mentioned Jodi and what's that process like? And he also talked about um, somebody starting a full time job. What are some of the um, perks attached to this whole NFT thing that anybody here can attach him or herself to? Thank you for your question. Good question. There are many opportunities in Web3, the new age of uh, digital ownership. There are several, several different opportunities from belonging to several different um, communities or projects. Um, there's a community called Meta Angels, for example. So like Meta Angels, every week, they ask people to uh, submit their needs and they award somebody 0 0.25 Ethereum, which is $1,000, right? So if you're an Ashesi student, so let's say you're having uh, difficulty paying your school fees, being a part of Meta Angels, or owning a Meta Angels NFC will give you access to these things. They also have discount on Adobe um, products. 
uh, they also have platforms where they help to showcase uh, different artists um, there's also jobs in like being a discord moderator like discord is the online platform where and there's like you can be there's there are also networking opportunities uh, meta angels have a wish so i'm um, actually i've secured a deal with meta angels um, they have a lending opportunity where they can lend you an nft for a particular period of time i've currently secured about 18 uh, angels to be secured for every uh, 18 people here um, which will give you access to their community the 0.25 ethereum every week um, getting to know people in the space it would be also good to help to onboard you into nfts uh give give you a feel of discord and the kind of people you can ask all sorts of questions and get all sorts of answers meet all sorts of people get all sorts of career advice uh job opportunities by being by virtue of being uh in such a community right so uh at the end of the session uh, i would i think i'll randomly pick 18 people or maybe i'll just open the forum for different applications to come in on why you want to be a member of this community and uh loan you a nft uh, you you get to meet whoever is loaning you the nft uh make friends uh, I, through this you can begin your uh, web3 journey uh yeah so at the end of the set i think that's a good place to clap our hands so The hub of NFTs is Twitter. Literally, it's so important who you follow because you know that uh, what gives you a competitive edge in NFTs is being ahead and knowing things first. You know what I mean? So if you follow the right people, you make the right money or you join the right communities. Like if you follow somebody who you know that they are into pump and dump schemes and they will intentionally pump something and hype it and tell you that it will make you $10 million. And as soon as you buy and they'll dump on you, if you follow 10 of those people, I'm sure I'll come here and they'll tell me you're at the hospital because <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So yeah, it depends on who you follow on Twitter. There are also certain websites. Um, I mean, after there'll be a, like a chill session where uh, I guess we can't go into everything today, but I mean, while we get each other's contacts and blah, blah. Uh, I can definitely tell you some more information. Uh, we can talk until the day ends because NFT is a very broad space. So it's who you follow. It's some websites that also show you what's coming, what's trending, who has a good community, what doesn't. Uh, NFTscoring.com, uh, Flips.finance, different different websites that I can uh, send to you to let you know what's 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 gonna be good, what's not. Sometimes you also have to do your own research, you know. And look at what they are doing what they aim to do who are the people like for example these people some of them are like uh, went to yale you know some of them have run venture capital firms some of them have been here cv workshops uh, so they, i've seen my titles with like different cv workshops editing your like there's so many opportunities for students especially i had an nft called a door dazzle right um that was the name of the NFT and I managed to outsmart them and get like 12, right? Listen, I got like 12 of them, of the NFTs. Now, I thought this one, I was, in, I was on a trip in Abidjan and I did, before that, I minted another one that I lost money. So I said, now anything I means, I will sell it fast. <laughs> so I minted and there was like, I think 0.1, like $300 profit on the 12. So I just sold 300, 300, 300 dollars profit. And I sold one, I kept one, because they always say keep one. Now the thing goes to one Ethereum. After I've sold at 0 0.25, mind you, one Ethereum is $3,000. So I was looking at 3,000 times 12, 12 times three, which is $36,000. NFC, we mention money like it's nothing. The money is big, it's true, right? right like literally and it's not like somebody said or like i saw it in a newspaper <laughs> like this stuff that i had 12 of that i sold off for like 300 dollars profit each and if i just waited a little bit while the hype came and the thing went to one it out of the system on <laughs> six stuff and like imagine you having to go through that ex like if, if you having to go through that experience it's very emotional because it's like it's like <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but in Ghana, where are going? <laughs> no, come on, bro. Like in Ghana, do you know how long it will take you to make thirty six thousand dollars? It's super duper uh, emotionally treacherous if you don't have the heart. No, it's true because you see things and you see it like at zero point four, and you hear about everybody talking about it, and it will do, it will do, and you say, uh, and you sleep, and you wake up the next day, and it's like five, and you're like, you know what I mean? So it's very like if you read the book The Intelligent Investor by Warren Buffett, he always speaks on how uh, investing is such an emotional game.